All right. Well, well Jonathan, well, thank you for, for joining me to, uh, to chat today. Uh, you know, I guess let's, let's dive right in. And, and really what this is, is, you know, we've been doing these segments on like leading through adversity and mm -hmm. how law firm owners essentially are not just adapting, but perhaps, uh, you know, finding creative strategies and things that they're doing during this time, even since Corona hit. Uh, but how, what has your experience been over the last several weeks? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, first off, thanks for having me, Michael. I really appreciate it. Um, my team transitioned uh, very quickly to working from home. Uh, first off, for context, I'm just north of Seattle, Washington. I'm in Snohomish County, Washington. Snohomish County, Washington, just a few miles away from the Evergreen Hospital in Kirkland, where the first coronavirus death in America was recorded and really the sort of ground zero for the crisis. So uh, my, uh, my fiance is an RN who works at the geriatric clinic at that hospital or for that hospital. So I've been sort of hearing about this thing from before everybody else really was and kind of seeing all the devastation that was happening. And very quickly, I realized that we were going to need a way to transition the team out of as much physical contact as possible. Um, so I very quickly implemented, all right, everybody, go home. Um, I have every one of my uh, team members, I've got two attorneys and a staff member, very small firm, me, two attorneys, staff member. They carry laptops. My uh, uh, front office uh, staff, she just took the front office computer home with her. I told her, take it home, set it up. Um, and I brought my office home and created this space. This space didn't exist three weeks ago. Um, and uh, we've done virtual meetings with clients. We do virtual Zoom meetings as a team. Uh, we've really just taken to it fairly well. And then a couple of days after we started that, Washington State Courts shut down. And then, of course, the governor and now, of course, the president. Everybody's starting to follow suit. And who knows how long we're going to be bunkered like this. But we got set up pretty early to be able to take it on. Uh, and I reiterated to my team right from the get-go, very first thing, I said, okay, guys, first off, I want to let you know, uh, as long as I'm physically able to do it, nobody's hours are getting cut, nobody's losing their job, uh, performance reviews that are scheduled, because I have some scheduled tomorrow, April 1st, performance reviews still happening, um, like business as usual. This isn't going to affect the way that I manage this thing, other than that we're going to take advantage of the, the new opportunities we have. Um, and uh, that really took a huge weight off a lot of people's shoulders. They, you know, I've got uh, members with brand new babies at home and things like that. We're not cutting benefits. Nothing's getting cut. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I was just going to ask you, I mean, how, how did they respond? Like, even once you, you know, not only once you share this with them, but also in the kind of the ensuing days that followed, like, what's, what's the transition been like for them in terms of, like, their output, you know, the, the morale, things like that? Um, the, the morale, I think, has stayed really high. I mean, I, I could almost feel them breathe a collective sigh of relief um, when I told them that. Uh, the output from them has been huge uh, because we're sort of blessed with this unique opportunity where the courts are shut down. And because we're, we're a DUI firm, we're DUI heroes, it's all we do is criminal law, we're in court you know, five days a week, we're in there doing our thing, we have nowhere to go, right? Which means we have nothing to do, except we have plenty to do we're getting caught up on, or rather are now already caught up on all the stuff that we weren't able to do when we were running back and forth to court. So now we have the time to start working forward in time, working ahead, refining our infrastructure, refining our processes, and making ourselves better and better than our competition, or you know, I should say our pseudo competition, because technically we have no competition because nobody has the same product we do. But um, we're using that to refine that task. And they're taking to it amazingly. And even with uh, two of my employees, uh, uh, all of my employees are female, and two of them have young kids at home. I have a young kid at home half time, and they're all doing remote learning from home. And so I'll get a, I'll get a, a Google chat message, you know, hey, uh, I'm, I'm logging off for 30 minutes. I have to go teach a lecture on Chopin. Right? And so, okay, go teach a lecture on Chopin, then come back, you know. Um, and it's just, it's been... It's been amazing. Uh, the team was faced with some extra challenges through this too, and they've really risen to that as well. So, it, I mean, it sounds like you, you obviously have been very, very proactive since the start of this, and, and also by the sign of it, it seems like the firm is gonna come out better on the other side. But, you know, when, when this was first, you know, when, I'd say when this was first going on, the court shut down, that puts a lot of firm owners in a very precarious position because they say, well, well, what can we do? Like, there's really nothing that we can do. We can't go to court, we can't move cases forward, things like that. Um, you took a very different approach. Now, what I'm wondering about is just, you know, with the business as a whole, were there specific things that you guys were able to do and like really invest time into now that 
maybe wouldn't have happened for a very long time or maybe perhaps wouldn't have happened at all had it not been for an event like this? Yeah, actually. So, okay, a very brief bit of sort of historical context. Um, uh, starting in about, I'm going to say, August of 2019, uh, I had a website redesign. I have a website company that does my website. We redesigned it. We changed our marketing message. And the marketing message we chose didn't work. And so from August through November of 2019, we had the worst four months in company history. We altered our marketing message. We signed up on a new branding video. We got our branding video put together. We started with Social Stack. And then in January 1st, we rebranded our law firm. We changed from Dictor Law Office to DUI Heroes. December, January, and into February of 2020 were three of the best months in company history. In fact, two of two, the two best months for sure, and then February was up there. And March actually performed pretty well, uh, considering. Amidst all that, we had changed to a law practice management software that it turned out we didn't like. So we're in the process of undoing that. We're changing all of our branding, changing all of our messaging. We're moving to a new software platform. By the way, then the courts got closed down. Then everybody's working from home. Oh, yeah, and the boss has cancer now. But what we were able to do with all that is take the time we needed to invest in finishing out those rebrands, finishing out that software change. We have touched base with every single client personally. We've touched base with them via email or directly or over the phone. And we said, hey, we're still here. We're monitoring your case. Here's what's happening with it. Do you have questions? And the other thing that I've asked my team to, to do is if we have clients who are talking to us about the hardship on them, if they've been furloughed, laid off, et cetera, a lot of our clients are on payment plans. Just ask them straight up, look, do you want to skip a couple of months on your payments? Is that, would that help you? you know? And it, thus far, we haven't had anybody say yes. We've had one person email me separately, but everybody's been like, no, but you know, well, thank you so much. And the response from them is fantastic. And it's building not just client loyalty, but it's building pride in the firm from the employees. It's part of our core values. Um, you, know, you, have, you have your core values poster up there. We have that on everybody's desk. Um, we, we created one similar to that after the Game Changers conference. Um, I sort of reinvented the firm starting from Game Changers moving forward. And this gives us the time to implement it. From a managerial standpoint, it gives me the time to start building some of the organic marketing content that I've been trying to get to and meaning to get to. And then the rebrand happened and then the software glitch happened and then this happened, that happened. And then I had two surgeries in the last three weeks. I haven't had a chance, but now it's giving me the time to do that. I'm working with my website guys. We're designing landing pages. I'm working with my social stack folks. We're tweaking where things are. I've increased my advertising budget with both my SEO company and with Chris because it, this is the time where when, when the doors open, there's going to be a huge party up there. Everybody's going to go out and have a party. And a lot of people are just going to get crazy, which means people are going to need us. They're going to need us even more. And when they look up, I want to be standing on the top of that hill. I want to be standing up there, not as the guy who was, you know, doing all the sleazy marketing and all that stuff or the guy who laid everybody off and went really cheap. But I want to be, you know, this is the guy who weathered the storm, grew the firm and continued to practice with integrity, not just with his clients, with the courts, with his partners, et cetera, so that people see us and they're like, yeah, those are the guys we want to work with. I love it. I love it. So let me ask you, I mean, the, there's obviously the, the professional challenges that you know, we're all facing, but on top of that, as you mentioned, you're dealing with also personal challenges yeah. throughout this time. Like, how, how are you, how do you stay positive? Holy cow. So, yeah, uh, uh, I was telling you a little bit before we got started, over the course of the last five weeks, literally the last five weeks in the midst of the COVID crisis, headaches, emergency room visit, undiscovered mass on my thyroid, six centimeter tumor, it turned out, was on my thyroid. We couldn't see it. We couldn't feel it. Took out the left side, had surgery three weeks ago. Pathology came back. Yes, malignant. It's cancer. We have to get the rest. Had that surgery one week ago tomorrow. I'm six days post-op right now. My scar is still, my incision is still healing. Um, how have I maintained my positivity through that? It, you know, it, it's funny. I, I had a moment when the diagnosis came and you'll, you'll appreciate this obviously because you're going to know where this comes from. Uh, but I had a moment, diagnosis came in and I was like, you know, crap, man, I got cancer. And I just let that sink in for a minute. 
And my fiance, Alex, she, she kind of grabbed my hand and she kind of got me to look at her and she said, hey, you know what? It's the best thing that ever happened to you. And I said, okay, all right, all right, cool. I, I'm, I'm with you there. And so we thought back to our pal Hal and, and kind of Hal's story. And, and I decided to turn it into something that was a positive thing. I decided to say, you know what? I'm not going to give up on leadership. I'm not going to give up on parenting. I'm not going to give up on my personal things that keep me happy, the things that keep my soul driven. I'm going to actually double down on those things. I'm going to go harder into them and make everything work because of this and in spite of this. And then if I can use that to be inspiring to somebody else, uh, well, then, then it's all worth it there. I've, I've kind of started the outlines of, of a new book. Um, I had uh, I had weight loss surgery about five years ago. and I wrote a book about that, and a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, I, I'm thinking about writing a book about this along with the, the, the difficulties of running a business through this and COVID, right? Because this has never been seen. We've never, this has never happened before. There's no playbook for this. There's no blueprint. We're making this up as we go, right? But those people who stay calm, stay focused, and invest in what works are going to come out ahead at the end of it, I think. So yeah. I just keep that front of mind. And um, when, when I don't have that, I have – she here, my poodles are out here somewhere. My poodle helps. So there's that. There you go. <laughs> well, and, and look, I, I, you know, I've said that we're all, we're all writing a book, um, whether literally or figuratively. And I think that the way in which we respond to things like this – well, first of all, uh, there, it's not very exciting or interesting to read a book about everything that went well all the time. Right. Who wants to read that? Yeah, the best books are always like, here's the crazy thing that happened. Here's how we responded. Here's, here's yeah. what the adversity is. But either way, you're writing it, right? So however, wherever the response is. Um, so, John, that's, that's incredible. Uh, and I guess just to, to close this out, what, what would you say to other law firm owners that are watching this? They're also experiencing challenging times. They're thinking like, you know, maybe like, what are my options? What can I do, right? They, you know, the courts are closed, like quite literally. Like they, yeah. they, literally there's, there's preventative measures. There's like sales prevention measures being taken place all over the nation. Um, what would you say to them? Well, number one, if, if you're in a small criminal practice like I am, right? And criminal is, I think criminal is going to take a hit off this, uh, especially with, with the exception of certain areas. Um, you know, yes, the governors have laid out all the ways that people can get in trouble for violating the stay home orders, but nobody's actually going to get prosecuted for that. It's just going to be, it's, it's a way to, to scare people. Um, if you can see an opening for your practice area and you want to market that heavily, market that heavily. If you're in family law, holy cow, this is going to be amazing right? Um, those sorts of things. If not, take 10, 15 minutes every morning, take a half an hour every day, whatever it is, as business owner, as manager, as leader, and sit down with a notepad or an app or a checklist and think about the things that you've always wanted to do with your business, but you haven't had a chance to do it yet. Those things that are like, boy, if I could do this, I'd be so much ahead of the next guy and I just wish I had the time for it. Well, guess what? You have the time now. <laughs> you have the time to create those processes. You have the time to make those extra forms. You have the time to uh, connect with those extra clients, to talk to those vendors face to face. You have the time to write that book. Find the things that you can do and connect with other business owners that own and operate the same kind of business as you do to find out what else is out there. Um, you know, I, I literally, as I was waiting for this call to begin, I signed up for the webinar you're hosting on Thursday about the CARES package because there's a lot in there for people in exactly my situation. And there's some amazing things that are going to not only keep us going, but give us that extra springboard we need to not have to stop. Because the worst thing you can do if you've started to build momentum, and our firm was building huge momentum, January, February, into March, our ball is rolling the worst thing we could do is stop right now. We have to keep rolling. Um, so connect with people, connect with your teammates, connect with yourself. Like those are the three things. Connect with other people, your teammates, and yourself, and find the things that you have the time and ability to do. And every time you connect with one of them or every time you check something off your list, that's another step forward you took instead of staying stagnant. Because you've only got two options right now if you're in my industry. Option number one, you can get out ahead of everybody else. Or option number two, you can be left behind, shuttered in a closed building. That's all you got. Yeah. Right? So. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I, look, I, I don't know one takes that in like a, you know, an offensive or cruel way. But No, you know, no. Like, 
I think it's easier to weather markets when things are going well. I mean, sure. like, you don't really learn a whole lot from that. But when, when adversity hits, you can, you can see businesses for who they are. You can see leaders for who they are, team members yes. for who they are. All these yes. things, you kind of shine a light on them. And in the end, I think this could be a very positive thing for businesses. Or, I mean, yeah. people can choose to, to perhaps stay in place, which, will, which would be a very negative thing. But yeah. as you mentioned, there's plenty of opportunity. There's, you, can, you can do something. Yeah. And, and more than that, the, keeping that integrity that you had, the, the optimism that you had, the, the idealism you had when you started the business, because we all did. Right. Very, I know very few lawyers, even criminal defense lawyers, who will get into this business saying, I'm going to be that, you know, really nasty lawyer everybody portrays on TV. Everybody came into this for really solid reasons, right? We all wanted to help people out with something. So try to get in touch with that and practice what you preach. Like I said, when I talk to my clients about, do they want to skip a payment? I'm not doing that because I think that's going to reap me marketing benefits later. I'm doing that because I'm fortunate enough that I can offer that to them. You know, I'm fortunate enough to say, you know, look, you're struggling right now. If I can help you, let me do that. I'm reaching out to another human being and connecting with them on a one-to-one -one basis. That connection just feels good and it puts good energy back into the system. The fact that it may also pay dividends on the back end when that client shows loyalty or leaves that Google review or refers their brother or whoever, well, great. That's a nice secondary side effect. But if the only reason you're doing it is to generate the marketing sort of mojo, that's going to show through. It's going to feel forced. It's going to feel put on. Um, in fact, the, the book I said I was going to write, I wrote a, a prologue to it. And I let uh, my fiance read it. And she said, um, I like the idea, but everything you wrote is terrible because you wrote it like you were trying to promote yourself. Uh, she said, nothing in this sounds like you. And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. And that's the thing. You've got to maintain your voice. You've got to remember who you are, why you're doing what you're doing, and that will shine through. If you were successful in February, you're going to be successful in July. I promise. You know, if you were super duper duper uh, busy and now you got no clients, you know how to get super busy because you've done it before. You'll do it again. Just remember who you are and find ways to refine that and advance it. Don't give up on what you've built. Love that. Jonathan, thank you, man. I, I, I truly, truly appreciate this. Uh, man, like, I think people are going to get a lot of value out of this. Uh, this is really great. So, so thank you for taking the time to, to just go through all this stuff. I find myself like nodding along to everything that you were saying. And, uh, and I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, that's, I appreciate that's, it. That's been the biggest thing. I mean, even, uh, even for myself, I, I've been very honest with the team every single day. I'm like, look, every day, if you're uncertain and things are grim for you, mm -hmm. I'm also uncertain and things are grim for me. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, this is my first time, you know, with the COVID-19 situation, you know, it's just <laughs> right? I'm like been here before you can make parallels to, you know, uh, recessions and things like that in 2008 and beyond and all that. But this is really a different situation. Well, you, you can't, I, I looked at a, an infographic this morning on one of the various websites that compared just something like unemployment claims in yeah. the U S compared to other recessions, et cetera. And it's so far above anything. It's, it's not like a recession. It's like, a natural disaster, but on a national scale. It's as if Hurricane Katrina hit the whole country. Yeah. And that's where we are, you mm -hmm. know, and it, we've never seen this before. We've never done it before. We're literally making up the rules as we go. But those yeah. of us that are leading, as long as we're leading with heart, can make sure that it's okay for everybody else. It's like, if you had to explain this to someone, that's how I got to jump off, but you had to explain the situation to someone who wasn't in it. Be like, imagine... <laughs> That somebody has basically said, okay, so you have to continue to run your business, but uh, we're not going to let anybody go outside. Uh, we're going to shut down all, basically, all state government all around. You're going to shut down courts, everything like that. So you can't really have commerce. Uh, and at the same time, like, uh, everyone's almost going to be paranoid and freaked out. Make it work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and, yeah. and yet, we're going to. And yeah. that's the thing. And those of us that don't lose our heads and you're, you're leading the charge on this, man, just in terms of businesses. Um, we're going to be the ones everybody's looking to later on going, how the heck did you rebuild? And, yeah. and the nice thing is you don't mind. I don't mind. We share that information freely. Yeah. And, and I, I share, I've shared my business blueprint with people just right out of the box. People say, well, why would you tell me how you did it? And I said, well, two reasons. Number one, there's more than enough business to go around. 
we're all going to be successful. You can by all means have access to what I did. Number two, by the time you are as good at I, as I am at what I'm doing, I'm going to be doing the next thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're always going to be a step behind the leader, but the leader can still lead by example. Yes. Agreed. All right. Well, thank you, sir. This is awesome. Uh, thank you for your time. If, anytime. If you need anything, just feel free to reach out to me anytime. But I'm, look, man, I'm, I'm totally inspired by you. I've been loving staring at this Play Bigger shirt because you're quite literally doing that. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just stay strong, keep, keep it going. You know? yeah. and, uh, and ultimately, I think this will be a really good story. I, I joke with the team, I was, you know, earlier this year, I was like, what are we going to talk about at the conference this year? You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. And then, like, whenever you put that right? out in the universe, be careful. Yeah. Because yeah, right? Be careful all, what you ask for. <laughs> yeah, you get all sorts of talk, talking points. So, yep. um, but all that is also predicated on how do we respond? You know, yeah. how are we as leaders during this time, all those different things. So, you know, it's, uh, it's refreshing to speak to someone like you. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you at the conference. I'll be right up there at that front table again. Awesome. See you, brother. Thank you. All right. Take care.